Hey y'all, today I'm going to show you how to make this unbelievably incredible gluten-free babka. Another new series I'm starting is Cook the Book, where I take recipes from regular cookbooks and turn them into gluten-free versions. And this one comes from a cookbook called The Good Bake by Melissa Weller. It's filled with a chocolate and cookie crumb mixture before being rolled up and baked into what can only be described as magnificent. So let's get into it and I'll show you how to make it. If you made my gluten-free sweet dough before, which many of you have, just skip right to the next step. For those who haven't, I'll go over it really quickly. So here's the ingredients you'll need. You can take a screenshot, pause it, whatever you have to do. And we just dump all of those into a bowl, mix it in a stand mixer for five minutes at medium speed, cover, let it rise until doubled and refrigerate it overnight. So my dough has been in the fridge overnight where it's going to stay until we're ready to use it. Right now we're going to make the cookies and then we'll come back to it. I know this may sound absolutely extra, but we're going to make our own chocolate shortbread cookies as part of the filling. Feel free to use a store-bought chocolate cookie if you can find one. Of course, gluten-free because this is a gluten-free channel after all. Even the GF Oreos without the filling would probably work. So we'll start by creaming 11 tablespoons or 155 grams of butter and a half a cup or 100 grams of sugar for two to three minutes. Y'all, these cookies are so freaking good. I'll be keeping this recipe in my back pocket just to make them separately. They're so addictive. We'll sift in one cup plus two tablespoons or 158 grams of Kim's gluten-free all-purpose flour blend, two-thirds cup or 57 grams of unsweetened cocoa powder, one eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda and a half a teaspoon of fine sea salt and carefully mix it in so it doesn't go everywhere because you know how this will go everywhere if you let it. It might take a minute, but it's going to start clumping up and it'll come together eventually. And then I just knead this on the counter until it's smooth and like a regular cookie dough. And actually, there is no need to refrigerate this. You can start rolling it out right away. The cookbook author, Melissa Weller, her recipe says to roll the dough to three-eighths of an inch. But I decided to go a little thinner because I really wanted to make sure the cookies would be crisp enough to actually get crumbs out of them and not just like mush. <laughs> so these are more between like one-eighth to a quarter inch thick. And notice I'm not being precise at all here. I mean, we're going to make crumbs out of them. So who cares what they really look like, right? I'm just using my pastry wheel to cut them into little cookies. Again, not caring really <laughs> what size or shape they are. I'd say you could even just roll out the dough into one sheet. I've done that before many times, like making graham cracker crumbs and what have you, but I haven't tried it on this recipe, so I'm not sure if it really would work. But one last thing to do is to prick them with a fork, and this isn't for looks. It's just to allow them to puff up and then any air can escape when they bake. And we're gonna bake these at 325 Fahrenheit for 12 to 14 minutes or so, or until the tops of them look really dry. It's hard to tell sometimes with chocolate cookies. They won't be, you know, brown around the edges. And they're not gonna also be super crispy. They're just like a regular shortbread. So crumbly, buttery, and man, are they good. So intensely chocolatey and just freaking good, y'all. So to make the filling, I've got four and a half tablespoons or 63 grams of butter that I'm putting in a microwave safe bowl. And then this is 35 grams of semi-sweet chocolate and 85 grams of milk chocolate. And I'll just microwave these for 30 seconds or so. By the way, I'm using top quality Calibo Calettes here. They aren't chocolate chips. I am really against using chocolate chips in certain applications such as this. I mean, they're great for cookies and all that, but when you really want a high quality chocolate, use a really good high quality chocolate. I'm adding 53 grams of honey and I'm just gonna mix that through and all of these wafers will eventually melt. 
Y'all, I get so many people asking why I don't use cups in a lot of my recipes, cup measurements. And here's a prime example of why. <laughs> this recipe calls for a third a cup of honey, but how would you have that? Because that's what I had to do. So I started by Googling how many grams are in a third a cup of honey, and then I just halved the gram amount. It's so much easier than trying to figure out, well, it's gonna be like two tablespoons plus one and a half more teaspoons or something like that. It's just so much easier, y'all. I know it's hard to wrap your head around if you're American, but I'm American and weighing makes your life so much easier, I promise. So I just added 75 grams of my cookie crumbs, which I had just put into my little food processor here and ground up. I'm gonna set this aside to cool down now and it'll thicken up as it cools, so it'll be much more spreadable. So I'm gonna grab my dough out of the fridge. I'm only making one babka at this time, just to show you. So this is half the amount of dough the recipe originally makes. And I'm just gonna knead this on my well-floured surface until it's smooth. And y'all know I always have little containers to the side of my different flour blends, all-purpose or bread flour, what have you. And I use those for rolling out whatever dough I'm making. So in this case, bread flour is in my dough. So bread flour is what's going on my counter or bench as they call it. Now I'm gonna roll this out pretty thin. I want to, it to be about the size of my baking sheet. So a uh, half sheet pan is 13 by 18 inches. So I wanna get it to like almost that point. And now I'm just gonna fold it and I, I wanna make sure that it's well floured so it won't stick to itself. But the folding is just so I can transfer it to my parchment lined baking sheet. And then I'm just gonna unfold it right onto the parchment. Oh, I forgot to mention too, that I sprayed the parchment with nonstick cooking spray and that's gonna make it a whole lot easier to come off of there. Make sure it's gluten-free, of course. And I'm just gonna stretch this a little bit to fit the pan and the parchment as best I can. I'm gonna cover this and I'm gonna put it in the freezer for 10 minutes. And this will make it so much e easier to roll up later because it is so thin and you'll get really nice, pretty spirals. All right, guys, this is right out of the freezer. I should say that this is not an essential step. You can definitely spread the filling on right after you uh, roll out the dough and roll it up without putting it in the freezer. I just wanted very distinct swirls and you'll see in a minute exactly what I'm talking about. But like I said, you can skip over the part of the freezer. You might not, it might not look quite as pretty. It's still gonna taste fabulous, so it doesn't really matter. And see, my filling has thickened up perfectly for spreading, but I've gotta be kinda quick because the dough being so cold will make the filling set up even faster. I'm trying to get it on every little millimeter of the dough, except for that half inch or so furthest away from me. And then you just start rolling it up. And because the parchment was sprayed with um, nonstick spray, it's so much easier to roll up as well. Make sure you roll it up as tightly as you possibly can. And then we'll pinch the seams. And I'm gonna actually, this is also a non-essential thing, but I'm gonna actually try to elongate this just ever so slightly, just so I can get a little bit of a larger roll that then I can cut in half. My old way of doing this was cutting it in half lengthwise and exposing the inside. And I think a lot of people do that with babka, but when I saw this recipe, I knew this is the one I really wanted to make because it is so beautiful. So I'll cut these in half and then I'm just gonna cross them on top of each other and kind of fold the ends in as best as I can to where it's like just a little bit almost braided looking. And I'm gonna put it in my eight by four and a half inch loaf pan that I've lined with parchment, also not essential, you could spray it 
but this particular pan has little like ventilation holes in the bottom so when I spray it I have to put it then on another sheet tray. I'm going to cover this and I'm going to let it proof until not quite doubled in size but definitely poofy and clearly visibly higher. And this is what it should look like. I didn't realize though, I put the seam side up. So it's probably gonna burst right open in the oven, but that doesn't matter because we're gonna cover it over with a glaze. And I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm gonna place a loaf in the oven and immediately drop the temperature down to 350 and bake for 30 to 35 minutes. And it's basically until it kind of springs back when you touch the top but it doesn't feel when you touch the top like it it's raw dough underneath. All right, we can't have a chocolate bobka without something on top, right? <laughs> That's what I've found anyway. Normally, it's either a sugar syrup, which is my original recipe, or a streusel, but this recipe uses a chocolate glaze and I am all for the chocolate glaze, so I've got four ounces or 113 grams of milk chocolate. Again, it's Calibo, so it's good quality. Four ounces or 113 grams of semi-sweet or bittersweet. Again, Calibo. You don't have to use Calibo. I'm just saying use a good quality chocolate. Eight tablespoons, which is one stick or 113 grams of butter, and one tablespoon or 20 grams of honey. And we're gonna microwave this at 30 second intervals until it's completely melted. Don't, don't like wait for it to show that it's melted, like take it out when some of the chips are still solid looking and then you can stir it and those will melt as you stir it. You definitely don't want to over microwave chocolate because it will burn. And then you'll just have to throw the whole thing out and start over. Ask me how I know this. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put my babka on a cute little serving platter here. This is another babka I made earlier and I allowed it to cool. And all you have to do is just spoon this glaze over the top and you can let it drip down the sides and pool up all you want because nothing's wrong with a little extra chocolate, you know, when somebody goes to slice a piece of it. We'll have to wait though until this sets before diving in, but Good news, it doesn't take that long to set, so it only takes maybe half an hour tops. All right, y'all, here's the moment of truth. All our hard work has paid off, and I think thick slices are the only way to go, don't you? <laughs> y'all, come on look at this sometimes i get so excited about making stuff like this that looks so beautiful because i still can't believe it's gluten-free but it is but we still have to make sure it tastes as good as it looks right look at the swirls of chocolate filling omg you guys are babkas like a breakfast thing or what coffee cake dessert I don't know. I just know they are darn good. That's all I know. Next time, it's going to be cinnamon babka because you know cinnamon takes a back seat to no babka, right? All the Seinfeld lovers out there know what I'm talking about. Enjoy.